Hello and welcome to another Retro video. On today's video we're going to be looking at stripping down the Sega Dreamcast, changing three electrical components on the joypad input board. This is the capacitor, the internal battery and the resettable fuse. Let's get to the video. So here's today's patient, the Sega Dreamcast. So the first thing we need to do is turn it over, remove the side modem and then four securing screws for the lid. The side modem just simply unclips and pulls out. So that's the lid removed. All you need to do is just put those screws with the lid um, and then at least you know when you come to put it back together that they're the correct screws for the lid. Now to remove the power board screws. Then the power button cable clip. Taking extra care on this board not to touch any capacitor pins until they've been safely discharged. Now to remove the power button and the cable. Next is the two small securing screws for the fan. Now you'll see me just wiggle the fan shroud. For some reason I forgot you've got to take the circuit board out before this will come out. Here I'm just removing the circuit board securing screws and the securing screws for the CD-ROM drive. The CD-ROM drive just simply lifts up after that. You'll see there's an electrical connection underneath. So on this part of the board you'll notice there's different colour screws. There's some black and there's some gold. Now you just need to remember which way round they go. The connecting ribbon between the main circuit board and the joypad input board just needs to be pulled out of the connections. Care needs to be taken when doing this just to make sure not to damage the ribbon. Now to remove the screws for the joypad input board. So the main reason for doing this modification is because the Sega Dreamcast has a fixed battery inside. So when this battery becomes dead, all you'll keep getting every time you turn the Dreamcast on is a message asking you to put the date and time in. So by putting this modification inside, it will allow the battery to be replaced once it's dead. So at this stage, the Dreamcast is all stripped down. We now have the circuit board that we're going to be working on. You can see the original fixed battery, the capacitor and the resettable fuse that we're going to be fitting. So this small kit was actually purchased from a seller on eBay. All I did was look up Dreamcast battery on eBay and this one came up. It cost less than £3 and that included shipping in the UK. So 
So now it's time to remove the old fixed battery and then get it ready for the new holder. So the old battery legs were slightly turned over on the circuit board, so I had to carefully bend these back so I could pull it out. Now to insert the new battery holder. This just gets pushed in and then soldered in place. Almost desoldered the wrong part there, and then I noticed what I was doing, it quickly stopped. So, on to the correct part and remove the capacitor. When inserting the new capacitor, just make sure you've got it the correct way round. So on this small project, I decided to use my cordless Milwaukee soldering iron. It saves getting the cordless one out, waiting for that one to heat up. Um, this one's relatively quick and it's ideal for small little projects like this. It is a little bit bulky, but you soon get used to it. Just tighten up the legs underneath the capacitor, just trimming them off with a set of side cutters. Now on to swapping out the resistor for the fusible type resistor. So again on this one the pins were slightly bent over on the circuit board so I had to just sort of prise them back to get it back out again. So now to add the resettable fuse resistor and then solder it in place. So that's all the soldering done. It's now much more of a simple task when the battery's dead. All you need to do is open the case, slot the battery out, slot the new one in, and it's done. I've just used a standard coin battery in this, um, but I think it is recommended to use a rechargeable coin battery. So if you can find one of them, it's probably preferable to put that in there. So now we're ready to get the console fitted back up together. First things first, the front panel goes on. Then we position the fan shroud on the circuit board and then lower it into the case. Next step is to put back in the circuit board that we are working on. Secure back down the circuit board with the four fixing screws. Now the main circuit board screws can go back in, just need to remember where the black ones go. Now we just push back in the ribbon cable, attach the main fan plug.
Next is to slot in the CD-ROM drive. And now to screw down the CD-ROM drive and the rest of the circuit board. Now to screw in the main switch and locate the wire on the side of the console. Time to replace the power board. Just make sure that when you do slot it in, that all the pins are lined up correctly at the front. Now to secure back down with the screws. That's all the inside fixed back together. Now it's time to get the lid back on. And now just to slot the modem back in and that's it, all done, all back together. So this is a screen that you'll be seeing every time you turn the console on when the original battery dies. Now with the modification and the new battery, this won't happen. It'll only happen again once the replacement battery goes dead and then you just have to swap it out. So now the date and the time has been set, I've now restarted the console and you can see how it will load up just straight into the main menu and then when you go into settings you can see the date and time is now saved. Thank you for watching the video, I hope you enjoyed it. Please like and subscribe and I'll see you on the next one.